All right, everybody, welcome to Physics Games. In today's episode on game development, we will cover randomness and random number generation in games. Let's start by discussing why we have randomness in games in the first place. Taking a look back at the history of games, excluding, you know, sports, of course, uh, we can see that randomness has been an integral part since the beginning. Some of the earliest known games, like Senate and the Royal Game of Ur, involved the rolling of dice, or more likely for their times, bones, to determine the number of moves that players can take. These games date back to around 3000 BC, which means that it is very likely that your ancient ancestors are no strangers to rage quitting. It also means that randomness is clearly a vital part of games for humans. Consider a scenario where your games have no randomness. Take for example a card game like poker, or maybe solitaire if you're just lonely. You and your friends gather around a table and prepare to lose your hard-earned $10 to someone getting a two-pair on the river. So for this first hand, you're the dealer and you shuffle the deck and pass out all the cards. As you flip over all of the community cards, you think, you know, hey, I got this in the bag. I'm doing pretty good. I got a flush. You keep betting and after the betting's all done, your friend reveals a full house, just barely beating you out on your flush. So you think, ah oh, man, so close. I'm sure I'll get him next time. You know, I'll get my money back, whatever. So you pass the deck over to the next dealer. They shuffle him up and deal him out again. You're very surprised to see you got the same exact two cards in your hand, but you're like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, that's just kind of random chance. It is what it is. And as the community cards keep getting flipped over, you get more and more surprised. Hey, these are the same exact ones as before, but you know, with these chances, there's absolutely no way that that guy got the full house again, right? So you keep betting, and once betting's all done, you're stunned to see yet another full house beating out your flush. I mean, what the heck, what's going on here? On the next deal, you get the same exact cards, and it's the same exact community cards, blah blah blah. But let's cut to the chase here, this game sucks. A card game with zero randomness, no one's having a good time, why would you play? The outcome is predetermined from the start. Uh, clearly, you need some amount of randomness in this game for them to be enjoyable, right? But why? Doesn't it, it seem weird that a, a game is only fun when portions are left up to random chance and not pure skill? Well, personally, I think this is because part of the thrill of the game is the unknown outcome. Like, let's say if you go into a game of chess and you already know ahead of time the exact moves that your opponent are going to make, Neither side's going to have a good time, you're always going to have the perfect response, your opponent's going to feel like they're doing terrible, you're not really playing a game, you're just kind of going through a set of predetermined steps, it's not really fun. You need to be left wondering what's coming next to be able to enjoy it. So shifting focus to video games, we've been playing a lot of Enter the Gungeon, a roguelike top-down shooter with a lot of different elements of randomness to it. I think the mystery of not knowing what items you're going to get on each run is really what compels you to keep on trying. So you die and you say, alright, you know what, maybe this next run I'll find that S tier chest. Or maybe this next run I won't have to face that same boss again. Since this is such a big part of that gameplay loop, it seems clear that game developers need to make sure that they will spend a good amount of time looking at randomness in their games and implementing it well. So here is a quick visualization of some of that randomness. It's a simple tool that I've made in Unity that I'm going to continue to expand upon as these videos progress. I will leave a link in the description and in the comments below that send you to the GitHub repo with all the source code. You're very welcome to look at it, change it, do whatever you want with it. Just don't tell me that the code looks bad because I know it looks bad. So let's start by looking at randomness graphs for now. In this scene, we're going to generate a number of random values and display the occurrences of each value on the graph. So let's say for now we want to look at uh, 10,000 random numbers ranging from 0 to 100. Let's round them to zero decimal places, essentially just casting them to integers rather than floats. Now the options we have over here are to generate the random values with Unity's built-in random generation or C Sharp's system random generator both of which here will generate uniform distributions. We also have a chi-square distribution and Gaussian distribution, but for now let's start with the uniform distributions. Because we are displaying the number of occurrences of each value, what we expect to see here is a flat line across the entire range. With 10,000 points we get sort of close to that, but not quite. 
We can also see that both the C Sharp and the Unity implementations of this, the min and the max values are a little bit of outliers. I think that this occurs either because the implementations of their RNG are non-inclusive of those min and max values or because of the rounding. But in either case, it is important to see that this occurs so that when you actually put RNG in your games, you can know to potentially exclude those two points. So this uniform distribution is very useful in game development. Let's take for example, again, enter the gungeon. When you're opening a chest and you know, hey, I've got a chest of the common rarity or something, you're expecting an equal opportunity to receive any item from that rarity's loot pool. You don't want to get a, something weighted toward either end of it. Like, you know, certain items are slightly better than others. Certain items are slightly worse, but they're all still considered common. You're not expecting it to be weighted towards the better ones or the worse ones. You just kind of want to get an even chance of getting any of those items. So now that you can see that these items are outliers, you might want to exclude the min and the max item ID from your pool and use them specifically to say like, hey, the min ID is common loot pool start, and then your next ID is actually an item. And similarly, the last one is just common ID stop. So shifting gears, let's look at the chi-square distribution. In my previous video, I discussed using this as a way to generate chests of differing rarities. Uh, I think I need to rescind that statement. I originally thought it would work well in this case as the chance of getting some chest over here on the right hand side is much lower than on the left hand side. So for instance, like a legendary chest or the glitch chest or something like that. And while that is true, I don't really think there is a need to generate this distribution as opposed to just using the uniform distribution. So let's say if you were to set common chest rarity at 50%, what you're looking at in either of these graphs is actually the integral or area under the curve to get your percentage of that chest occurring. In the uniform distribution, this would occur at min and one half, like uh, max minus min over two. But in the chi-square distribution, if you check the area between those same two points, you're going to get more than a 50% chance as the graph is heavily skewed to the left-hand side. Of course, you could change your range from min to half to min to one quarter, also known as one half squared, but that just seems like extra steps to get the same result. And finally, let's look at the Gaussian distribution. In particular with uh, roguelikes and shooter games, I think this is very useful for weapon spread. So let's take this graph and look at it as if it was a top-down view, and your player character is at the center of the x-axis on the bottom, shooting upwards. You can imagine this graph then as an indication of weapon spread, where the mean or the center is a dead straight shot, and the variance shows your weapon spread. So depending on weapon type, player perks, player modifiers, etc., you can either tighten or widen that curve, increasing or decreasing player accuracy. So to recap, randomness is a vital part of any game. You need to ensure that you balance the amount of it in your games or else players feel like they lose agency. And we went over a quick visualization of randomness and discussed why and how to use each type. In the next video, we will look at some testing for RNG, making sure that the values you pick in development create the expected outcomes and make for a fun game. I want to say thank you very much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Leave any feedback you have in the comments below, and I will make sure that I respond to them. All right, peace.